Hello! Today I'm going to walk you through how to make this amazing crayon tumbler. It makes the perfect teacher's gift for teacher appreciation, Christmas, beginning of the year, end of the year, um, and also it's a great way to personalize a tumbler for your child that's taking their um, water bottle to school too. So it's done using the citrus drip method. I'll walk you through that step by step. I'll also give you this free SVG so you can follow along and you can make your own with me. What you'll want to do first is go out to my website to pull down the free SVG. So it's beesneescreates.com. Go to the freebies tab. I've also linked it down below the video if you just want to go ahead and click that link. So what you'll want to do, you'll want to download that and you'll want to save that somewhere on your computer. So once you have that done, go ahead and go to Upload, Upload Image, Browse, Browse out and find where you saved it on your computer and pull it in. Select it and add it to your canvas. What we're going to do next is take a look at measuring the tumbler so your SVG is set up to the correct size. If you're using the same exact tumbler as me, then perfect, everything's ready to go. I selected this tumbler because it's almost the same diameter at the top as it is at the bottom. It does taper down a little bit, but you don't want that you don't want one that tapers down significantly because then it's hard to get the vinyl to lay flat when you're going around it. So some, something to keep in mind, if you're not using the exact same tumbler as me, and that's totally fine if you're not, you're going to want to adjust your SVG to match the measurements of your tumbler. So what I did is I measured around at the top, and I saw it was just a little over 9.25 inches. So my SVG hangs over just a little bit so I can line it up without a gap when it meets, but not too much because you want those stripes in the middle to meet at the same point. So measure the top of your tumbler and see how long it needs to be and adjust the SVG accordingly. And then the bottom stripe, if you bring up my SVG, you'll notice that the bottom stripe is a little bit shorter than the top because it does taper a little bit. If you can find a tumbler that doesn't taper, that would be even easier, but this one still isn't too bad. Um, and if you can see right there, we are about 8.75. So again, I went just a little bit more than that. That way it overlaps, but it doesn't overlap too much that the stripes don't line up. And then based on that, you're gonna wanna think about, okay, how tall is my overall tumbler? And again, if you're using a similar tumbler to what I'm using, I have everything set up um, already, but if you need to adjust anything, think about how big that oval in the center needs to be. Mine is four inches. So I give myself just a little bit of a gap in between the stripes in the oval. So again, measure, think about it, set it up accordingly to what you're using. The tricky thing about citrus strip is it's the reverse of putting vinyl on a tumbler, so it's basically a stencil. So we're going to want to citrus strip these white areas out. And this, where it's purple, that's going to be where the color stays on the tumbler. So it's a little backward, so it gets a little bit confusing, but since I'm walking you through it, you will do amazing and have no issues. So the next thing we need to do is we need to personalize this. And we're gonna personalize it together because everybody's gonna put a different name on it. I'm gonna put a teacher's name on it and use this as a um, Christmas gift for a teacher, but these are also amazing to put your kid's name on and have them you know, use that as their school water bottle. And so whatever name you wanna do. Um, so I already have my name here and I used a font called Kronos Pro Bold Caption. And that's the one that's very similar to the actual Crayola font itself, um, but it's not found in Cricut Design Space, so I pulled it in. Um, an, an option, something that I think is 
cute in Cricut Design Space that you could use if you don't have access to this Kronos Pro Bold caption font, because it does cost money. I think it's like maybe $30 for the font. I like this BFC birthday party, which is available um, through Cricut Access. So you could always use this font if you're following along with me. And it's, what you would do is you would select text and you would come up here to font and select whichever font you want, be it a Cricut font that you have access to, or be it a system font that you've downloaded elsewhere and brought in. So once you find your font, then go ahead and type in your name. And now you have your name. So what we're going to do next, select, so highlight your text. I'll start with this one that we just did. Highlight your text, come up to the offset, select the drop down, and there is no right or wrong offset um, size here. So whatever you think is going to look good. So I'm going to go with that for this one and then I think in this one I'm going to go with this size. So two different looks, um, you know, it's going to look different based on your font. So basically whatever you think looks good, whatever works for you, go ahead and do that. And then what you're going to want to do is, and again, I'll show you on this one first, is you're going to want to select that offset that you just did and your font at the same time. So just drag and grab them both. And you can come over here and you can see that those are both highlighted. So I know I have them together. What I'm going to want to do then is I'm going to want to come down and I'm going to slice. So what that does is you can see if I once I pull that top font off, then I've sliced out below it. And actually we can delete these two because this is what we want to keep. And go ahead and you can change that to purple. And then I'm just going to do that real quickly with this one again. You select them, you slice, you remove the font, and you remove what you just sliced out. And I'm going to change this to purple. Okay. So I'm just going to get rid of this one because we don't... I'm going to get rid of that one and focus on just one. So what I'm going to do now is you're going to take this and you can see where my arrow starts to turn into like this bended um, arrow. Once it does that, then you can click down on your left cursor and keep that clicked down and then just drag this until it's straight up and down. And this is going in here. So we need to make it a little smaller. So again, just come over here and when you see that arrow, that straight arrow this time, grab the edge and then just start shrinking it down until it fits right in that oval. Okay, that looks good for me to me. And now keep in mind again, this these white areas, that's where you're going to citrus strip. So that's what's going to come out and be the stainless steel color. All of this purple is going to be whatever color the paint on your tumbler. So we're protecting the paint on your tumbler with this vinyl. Everything that's white that's what we're going to eat the paint away with the citrus strip. So what I'm going to want to do next is I'm going to want to take, whoops, I'm not going to want to do that. I'm going to actually want to ungroup this and I'm going to select the center section here and I'm going to attach it together because when I cut them out, I want these to be together. These do not have to be together because I'm going to put those on one at a time because those are really tricky to get on straight and flat. Um, so I'm not going to put this whole thing on together. I'm going to put it on in pieces. 
but if you go ahead and do that, so I'm going to select make it, and I'm going to do this on my mat, and I'm using my Maker 3, but you can use your Explorer Air as well to cut it out, and we'll select continue. And let's talk real quick about which vinyl we're going to use. So I use permanent vinyl. That's right, I said permanent because you can always peel permanent off. So it's never permanent. But you need that good seal so that citrus strip does not get under the vinyl. So definitely use a permanent. I use personally use Tech Wrap, works great. I've heard people have success with Oracle 651 as well. Um, some of the Cricut vinyls have been a little shaky, so I personally have not tried them, so I can't recommend them. Um, but you'll want to grab one of those. Obviously, any color, it doesn't matter because you're just using this as a stencil. You're going to throw it away. So pick a color you don't use very often or one that you have a lot of and go ahead, load it on your mat and cut it out. We have our design cut out. And now this is the important part because you want to make sure you weed this the correct way. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to cut these apart. Okay, I have my pieces cut apart. So now I'm just gonna remove the outside large portions around them. But now what you wanna do, if you remember in design space, we wanna make it look like that. So the white in design space was this oval. And then we wanna remove the very center of our name. Okay, and then on our stripes, I'm going to remove the outside and this part is coming up with it, which is perfectly fine because if you remember, again, we want this stripe in the middle to be the color of the tumbler and we wanna citrus strip this off. Then we'll do the same thing to the other one that I mutilated a little bit there. Okay, so we have our stencils ready to go. Okay, now we are ready to apply our stencil to our tumbler. And your first step is always clean the tumbler with, an, with some alcohol. So just like any other object that we're applying vinyl to, we want it to stick well. So we wanna get rid of all of the dirt and oil and dust off of it so it has the best possible chance of sticking. So go ahead and clean that off and then let that dry. Remember, my tumbler is a little bigger at the top than the bottom, so I'm gonna start with the top and I just wanna make sure this one's the top. So I'm gonna start with that one. I'm gonna take some transfer tape and this is Tech Reps Matte Transfer Tape, and it's very easy to work with because it sticks well, but it's not too sticky, if that makes sense. So I'm not fighting with myself over it, especially when I'm doing something like wrapping around a tumbler. Okay, I'm gonna cut off the excess at the end. And this is gonna be the trickiest part of the whole project because what you need to do with this is you need to get it around the tumbler so that this lines up and you have to make sure this piece is totally flat 
and then this edge is flat and this edge is flat because your citrus strip is going in here and you don't want it to get under here and you don't want it to bleed up or under there. And because this tapers slightly makes it just even more that more difficult. But so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this parchment paper. This is going to help me get it lined up without ruining it. So I'm going to put this on the parchment paper. I'm going to line it up. Now keep in mind, you can see that's where your, um, your strip will be. It'll be this amount that you see through here, plus it'll be this right here because we're not gonna citrus strip that. So when you're putting this on, just keep that in mind. So I'm going to have a little bit at the top, but not too much. Now this is where the parchment paper comes in handy because if you can see this, I did a bad job and it's not lining up at all. So at least I was able to figure that out without having to start all over with the vinyl. So I'm going to try this again, and I did better this time. So if you see that, you can see through the parchment paper, and you can see each one of these is lined up, and just go around it, make sure it's pressed flat. So once we know where we want it to be, pull the parchment paper back. And make sure your vinyl is going down evenly. Just get it down for now and we will work on getting it down tight in a little bit. back there we go and I will get this off now I can kind of one at a time work it because remember the bottom is a little bit tapered so it's really hard to line it up when you're dealing with one piece but you can go ahead and peel these back a little bit once you have it in the right area and then get those on exact and as you can see I have a little bit of overlap but not too much so everything still lines up and actually this one's fine um, it's not lined up great up here, but we're not going to see anything there because the citrus strip is going to be here. So that is our top stripe. I think it looks pretty good. Now I'm going to do the bottom and I'm going to make sure my seam is lines up on this side too, because then I'm going to put the oval on the front. So just in case we have any little tiny issues here, it won't be the front, it'll be the back. So now we want to get our name on. So again, the same thing. Transfer tape. But now don't forget that's our seam. So that's the back. So make sure that is in the back. And then this just needs to go in wherever you want it. And if you notice, I'm overlapping vinyl with vinyl, but that's totally fine. That's actually great. We wanted it to work out that way because we want to keep the citrus strip off of the paint in this area. 
So if for some reason yours doesn't line up exactly and you have little gaps with paint, we will put painter's tape on in a second and you will protect it that way. Make sure that's nice and straight. So cool, it looks like a crayon already. Okay, before I pull this up, I've talked about how important it is that this vinyl is down as tight as it can be so the citrus strip does not leak underneath it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a tennis ball and I'm going to run over everything and I'm going to rub it down as hard as I can. And then when I'm done with the tennis ball, I'm going to hit it with a little bit of heat. I'm going to use my heat gun at 400. Um, to go over it for like 30 seconds each side. If you don't have a heat gun and you have a hair dryer, pop the hair dryer on high and do the same thing with that. Okay, now you want to make sure you have no air bubbles or anything um, that's not totally flat along the edge. So I have a little, like some little air bubbles here, but that's fine because that's not where my citrus strip is going to go. But now I have this little thing right here, which could be an issue. So I really want to make sure I have that down. Even if you would have wrinkles over here, that's no problem because we're not citrus stripping there. We're citrus stripping here and here, here and here. So what about those areas that we aren't citrus stripping? We need to protect them with painter's tape. So this part is very important and I didn't realize it at the time. Here I'm just putting one layer of painter's tape on. You get to the end of the video and you see there's a little spot where it looks like the citrus strip might have Kind of eaten away even on through the painter's tape and there's a little little chip out where I didn't want it to be. So to save you um, that go ahead and either put on two layers of painter's tape or better yet put vinyl where I'm putting the painter's tape if you have enough because this vinyl at least the tech rep vinyl I use is bulletproof nothing gets through it. So if I were to do it all over again, I would have taken all the space that I'm putting this painter's tape on and I would have put vinyl there. Um, oddly enough, this has never happened to me before. This is the first time the painter's tape didn't 100% protect it. And maybe it wasn't the painter's tape. Maybe it was some other phenomenon. But um, just to save you any strife at the end, that's what I recommend doing at this point. Okay, we are ready to go. We are ready to go on to applying the citrus strip. So we have it all vinyled up, the vinyl's pressed down, all taped up, so we're not gonna get to any parts of the paint that we don't want to. So the hardest part is over. You have it prepped, you have it ready to go. Now we just apply the citrus strip. So definitely make sure you wear gloves before you do this step. And I just want to talk a second too about the time method versus the heat method. So I used to do both methods and now I'm just sticking to the time method. I'm no longer doing the heat method. I mean, you can do the heat method on this if you want to, um, but I don't do it anymore because I've learned two things since starting it. One, I learned that citrus strip, even though it has a flammability rating of one, which is low, it's still flammable. And two, the fumes that it releases, I just really don't know if they're toxic, what's in those fumes. So you really should wear a respirator. And one, I don't have one. And two, 
I don't enjoy crafting that way. So if you have to suit up to craft, it's not my thing. So just make sure if you're doing the time method, just make sure you're wearing gloves. Um, if you have protective eyewear, that's fantastic as well. And make sure your room is well ventilated. If you can do this outside and the temperature is, is right, then all the better. So that being said, with the time method, this is my sitter strip in a little jar. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put this on. I'm gonna glob this on very thick. And the only reason you wanna make sure it's on thick is because citrus strip only works when it's wet. So if you have a little thin area and it dries out, then it stopped working. So make sure everything is thick enough that it's not going to dry out. We're going to go all the way around the tumbler and get the whole thing. Okay, I think we have globbed it all on there. And as you can see, it's messy. Uh, just to note, I do have a white silicone mat down here to protect my table. Um, so now what I'm going to do is this is the part where we let it sit. And I did a test on the bottom to see how long this is gonna take. And you always wanna do that. You always wanna test a little spot on the bottom if you can. Let me just show you. This was just some testing around I was doing. Usually it only takes one, um, but I was doing some other things. And so you always wanna do a little test on the bottom. So you know one, that it works, and two, how long you're looking at. And after my test, it told me about 50 minutes to an hour. So this is gonna drip and drop all over the place and run down. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use this saran wrap and I'm gonna wrap it up in that. And that is actually gonna serve two purposes, oops, two purposes for this project. One, it's going to help the citrus strip stay in place and not drip. And two, what it also does is it helps the citrus strip stay wet, so it keeps it from drying out. Um, which, like I said before, once it gets dry, it stops working. So just make sure you haven't created any. I kind of, when I went to roll that up, I kind of scooched it. So I kind of slid some of my citrus strip off. So I'm getting it back where it needs to be. So you still want to keep your eye on it. Still check this. And since I know it takes about 50 minutes to 60 minutes, when I get to 50 minutes, I'm going to start checking it. And then I'll check it every 15 minutes if it's not ready um, after that. So, but what you'll want to do, since this is a 360, it's all the way around the cup, you're not just sitting it and forgetting it. Just come, take a look, make sure your citrus strip hasn't dripped off anywhere. Um, if it has, just unwrap it and fix it, um, but keep your eye on it throughout the process. And I will see you back here in about an hour. Okay, it's been 50 minutes, so we're back, and I am going to test it and see how it's coming. Oh, so what you want to do is you want to scrape and you can see there that the paint is just coming right up. And I'm testing some of these spots that look like they don't have as much citrus strip on them just to make sure I'm safe everywhere. And it looks like I am. And I just tested with my uh, little weeding tool, but you can test um, with anything. Just make sure you're careful and um, you don't scratch the stainless steel below it. But I found on all my tumblers, this has never scratched it. So, so now what you're gonna do is you're gonna wash the super strip off. 
So I'm going to run over to my utility sink real quick and do that. Just rin I'm just rinsing it off with water. Um, water temperature doesn't really matter. Just rinse it off, get it nice and clean, and then I'll meet you back here for some scrubbing. Okay, that's as good as I'm going to get it for now. So now what we're going to do is we're going to scrub. And I'm going to start with my Scotch-Brite. It's a non-scratch sponge. So you always want to make sure you're using something that is not going to scratch um, the tumbler. Oh, and, Biv, and also, I'm leaving, if you notice, I'm leaving my vinyl on for now. That's going to help um, protect the paint that's beneath. And also, if you do find you've missed a spot... You want to keep that vinyl on until you know that for sure because if you did miss a spot then you just put the citrus strip back on and let it sit for longer and as long as that vinyl is still on there it's no big deal and also my my tool that i tested with i also find if you just scratch a little bit and get it going then that really helps with the scrubbing. Okay, so what we're doing next now is I'm taking off all the tape and all of the vinyl and then we're going to scrub it again. Okay, finally, we got all the tape and the vinyl off. Um, it's just tough to do in gloves, but again, safety first. Um, now what I'm gonna do is I always take my scrub daddy for the next step and then I kind of go over it real as hard as I can because Scrub Daddy, again, will not scratch it. And I go over. And you can see this looks amazing already. I think it looks crisp and clean and clear. And I've rinsed all the citrus strip off so I can take these gloves off now. But if you want to continue continue to detail, you can either take, I prefer um, an orange stick, which is for nails, but I've misplaced mine and I can't find them right now, uh, but you can use your fingernail or you can use a toothpick and you can continue to detail with these. If you can see right here, as you go along and if you just scrape along the edge, all of that paint there is loose and you can keep working it until you get the crisp clean edge you're looking for although i don't really think this needs much work it did a great job now the only thing to point out here is if you see right up here this little piece of paint came off so i'm thinking either and that's where my painter's tape was so i'm thinking if i were to do this again and if you guys are doing this project maybe put on a, either a double layer of painter's tape or even if you can just put some vinyl there because the vinyl seemed to do a lot better job of keeping the citrus strip up at bay than the painter's tape did so i would say either a double layer of painter's tape or um if you can just use your vinyl there and cover every inch with your vinyl so that would be my only the only thing that wasn't perfect on this i hope you were able to follow along and make your own amazing tumbler and if you downloaded the SVG and like it, don't forget to give me a like and subscribe for more free SVGs and tutorials in the future.